Greetings. This video provides a concise summary of the important security properties of hash functions, the main cryptographic ingredient in hash-based signature schemes. A hash function is a mapping H that maps binary messages of arbitrary lengths up to a maximum L to outputs of a fixed length N. Typically, L is very large. For example, L might be 2 to the power 64, while N is much smaller. For example, N might be 256. H of X must be efficiently computable for every message X in its domain. We call H an N bit hash function and H of X the hash or message digest of the message X. Note that the description of a hash function is public and fixed. So a hash function has no secret keys. To ease the notation, I will usually write 0, 01 star to describe the set of all binary messages of length at most L. More broadly, a hash function is an efficiently computable function from a set S to a set T. The three primary security requirements for hash functions are pre-image resistance, second pre-image resistance, and collision resistance. Pre-image resistance is the following property. Given the hash value y, chosen uniformly at random from the function's codomain, it should be computationally infeasible to find, with non-negligible success probability, any message x whose hash equals y. I'll call x a pre-image of y. Typically, there can be many x's which map to a given y. H is pre-image resistant if finding any one of these x's whose hash equals the randomly selected y is computationally infeasible. The second important security property of hash functions is second pre-image resistance. Second pre-image resistance is the following property. Given a randomly chosen message x, it should be computationally infeasible to find, with non-negligible success probability, a second message x primed different from x, with the same hash as x. The third security requirement for hash functions is collision resistance. A hash function is collision resistant if it is computationally infeasible to find, with non-negligible success probability, two distinct messages x and x primed that have the same hash value. Such a pair of messages is called a collision for h. Since the domain of h is typically much larger than its codomain, collisions must exist by the pigeonhole principle. The key question is not their existence, but whether any one collision can be found efficiently. Based on the definitions, we can concisely summarize what it means to break the pre-image, second pre-image, and collision-resistant properties of a hash function h. To break pre-image resistance, you're given a randomly selected hash value y, and you have to find a message x, any message x, whose hash equals y. To break second pre-image resistance, you're given a randomly selected message x, and you have to find a second message x primed, different from x, with the same hash as x. To break collision resistance, you're given nothing, and you have to find two distinct messages x and x primed, which have the same hash value. By examining these statements more carefully, you can deduce that the security properties are related to each other. It's not hard to argue that if a hash function is collision resistant, then it is also second pre-image resistant. Collision resistance also implies pre-image resistance, provided that the hash function is somewhat uniform, meaning that each hash value has approximately the same number of pre-images. On the other hand, pre-image resistance does not guarantee second pre-image resistance, while second pre-image resistance does imply pre-image resistance for somewhat uniform hash functions. Finally, second pre-image resistance does not imply collision resistance, and pre-image resistance does not imply collision resistance. From these relationships, we see that collision resistance is the strongest of the three properties. A collision-resistant hash function is necessarily both pre-image resistant and second pre-image resistant, 
but the converse isn't true. You can find proofs of these results in video V3B of our Cryptography 101 Building Blocks course. A generic attack is one that applies to any hash function without relying on its specific design or weaknesses. For classical computers, the fastest generic attacks for finding pre-images takes 2 to the n operations. For finding second pre-images, also takes 2 to the n operations. And for finding collisions, takes 2 to the power n over 2 operations. To ensure that all three attacks remain computationally infeasible, a hash function should be used whose outputs are at least 256 bits in length. This ensures that finding collisions requires at least 2 to the 128 operations, which will be computationally infeasible for the foreseeable future. The security landscape changes when considering quantum attacks. The most efficient or most cost-effective generic quantum attacks for finding pre-images takes 2 to the power n over 2 operations. For finding second pre-images, also takes 2 to the power n over 2 operations. And for finding collisions, takes 2 to the power n over 2 operations. Grover Search is an algorithm for quantum computers and provides a quadratic speedup over the fastest generic classical algorithms for finding pre-images and second pre-images. The Van Orschert Wiener Parallel Collision Search is an algorithm for classical computers. The most commonly used hash functions today belong to the SHA-2 and SHA-3 families. The SHA-2 hash functions are iterated functions, available in three output lengths, 256, 384, and 512 bits. The hash functions in the SHA-3 family use a sponge construction and also offer three output lengths, 256, 384, and 512. For both SHA-2 and SHA-3, the fastest attacks known for finding pre-images, second pre-images, and collisions are the generic attacks mentioned on the previous two slides. This table summarizes the security levels of the SHA-2 and SHA-3 hash functions against quantum attacks. I'll remind you that a security level of L bits means that the fastest attack known takes approximately 2 to the power L operations. The 256-bit hash functions provide 128 bits of quantum security, whereas the 384-bit hash functions provide 192 bits of quantum security. These security levels make SHA-2 and SHA-3 suitable for hash-based signature schemes in the post-quantum world.